Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy, so keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. My wife, she's missing. I fear terribly for her safety. Some women are just looking for a reason to go missing. She disappeared into the Ahedar Desert, the heart of the Whispering Waste. The suicides go, it has an exotic appeal. I fear she has returned to my former mansion. If you would track her, find her, bring her home, you'd pay me in sad looks and liquor. The mansion was never reclaimed by the tax collectors. Dark rumors swirl amid the whispering winds. Landly my efforts were ruined amid the dooms and cataclysms past. If my vault is untouched, its entire contents, the wealth of five noble generations, are yours. You had your openers and closers reversed. I should warn you, Sir Thief, or Nachtin, the boards call it. The dead citadel. Worse still, the whispering wastes do not lie empty. Rumors swirl of a figure stooped and shrouded in grey, face hidden, dragging a silver blade at his side, carving his way to the criminal element of two entire countries. None have divined its purpose, and it is only ever spoken one word, one most would not even recognize as a name.
Trim's my best bud. I don't know what I'd do without him. But there's some things we should keep locked away. Not the imaginary friends, but the imaginary fiends. Krim, where are you? No sparrow, does this word not sound like the death bird culling the living dead at dawn? It is the name both ghouls and demons dare not say, for they know it means death for the undead. <laughs> What is up all you beautiful fine people? How are you doing on this Thursday afternoon or evening depending on where you're located in both the world and the continental US? I hope everybody's doing well. It's great to see you guys here at the Speakeasy. Man has it been a minute. Whatever this thing is, it's going around. And I know you guys are like, you know, we're catching all manner of ridiculous things around about now. Um, but man does it linger and take a while to kick. So if you're uh you're trying to get better from whatever these various things are that's going around, I hope your recovery is going well, and uh, much love to all of you folks in the chat. Let's see who we've got here up in this place. It is great to be back with you guys. I can't overstate it. So first and foremost, we have John in the chat. John, it is great to see you. Thank you so much for being here today, brother. We've got channel member Cranberry Langers. It is great to see you, Cranberry Langers. Timmy Mello in the house, another channel member. Dear friend, it's great to see you, brother. I hope you are doing well. We have got Phil, my brother from another mother, hanging out in Chicago. Absolutely, with Lost Pages 3, guys, check it out. The link is in the description. Let's see who else we've got up in here. We have got Marcus Kellegru. It is good to see you, Marcus. How are you doing, my friend? I hope you are doing really well. Oh, yeah, it's totally double monkey pox. Let's be clear. That's that's what I've got to have. Um, so if my nose falls off in the middle of the stream, you'll know. Uh, Praetor7, it is great to see you. Uh, nothing much, man. It is <laughs> nothing much up here. I hope everything is well with you, brother. Uh, let's see what else we've got going on here in the chat. We've got Lord Ravener. It is great to see you, Lord Ravener. Special delivery on its way. Speedy delivery. So I cannot wait uh, until you get that. Let's see who else we got. Who have we got? Who have we got? Let's make sure I got everybody here. 
We've got Skunk Artworks in the house. Some beautiful artwork, by the way. If you haven't checked out Skunk Artworks, do check out the Twitter uh, feed. There is some great artwork on it, so please do. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, thank you guys for being here, man. Holy cow. I have been working like a maniac, and I've been... <laughs> Cranberry Langers is killing me, man. Um, but it's, it's one of those things to where I've been working like crazy, and there is so much stuff that I would like to show. As Oasis once said, there are many things that I would like to say to you, but I don't know how, or I should say I don't know how to do it without spoiling certain things. But it's tough because I'm not really a, um, I'm not really uh, one of those people who's um, anti, you know, hearing about things and, and concerned about spoilers for myself. But I'm just trying to walk, you know, like a, a fine, you know, sort of line with all of that stuff. And so for me, when I'm doing this work and when I'm putting this stuff together, oh, well, you're welcome, Skunk Artworks, of course, man. Uh, when I'm doing this stuff, one of the things I do and one of the ways in which I approach this stuff is um, is I always try to approach it like when you're putting together a piece of furniture. And, you know, you don't want to tighten all of the screws at the same time be or, or as you go because then you might have to loosen something up a little bit. So I've basically been going back and doing some of that stuff more and more. But I did definitely hit a wall in terms of streaming where I go, wait, what can I show today? What can I do? Especially when I'm working on something that is in these final pages. So here's a little update for you guys. Uh, God, I feel like I just went into the town a little bit there. Here's a little cheat sheet for you. Uh, here's an update for you guys. Um, and I was going to, I'm going to, was going to message Lord Ravener back, but Lord Ravener's here. Um, my plan, now this does not mean... It's like uh, everything is whatever. But my goal is um, by Saturday, I'm going to put paint on. So there will be paint on every single page of this book. And the last storytelling page of this book. Oh, gosh, it's so frustrating to not be able to show you guys this stuff. You guys have been with me from the beginning. Hold on a second. Shoot. I need a hat for a minute. We've got Mrs. Good Stuff in the chat. I doff my cap to you. This is good stuff. So there we go. I had to put a hat on for a moment to do that. It is great to see you. But it is so frustrating because as you guys know, as you guys well know, we build this stuff here. We build this stuff live. It doesn't happen without you guys. And it doesn't happen without this incredible, unique, and amazing thing. Past Master Dan, it is great to see you, my friend. How are you doing? Um, but we don't build this thing without support from you guys. It is not possible. And that's what the Iron Age is about. That's what this kind of new push in media is about. And um, it is very strange for me not to be able to show you guys what I'm working on. It is a very surreal thing. And because it's, it's um, how do I, I word it? It's um, everything about this book and everything about this process has been designed around me sharing this with you guys. Because, again, you have so much of the project that before you get to those final pages and now that we're here it's it's unbelievably i'm trying not to use like the the lamest words i can come up with but here it is when you get to this stage of a project like this it is unbelievably emotional man <laughs> it really is because you've just poured your your soul into it in the sense of you take this leap of faith and there's all sorts of, of fears that you have when you do this kind of stuff that are not, um, that you alone are going to be the person who carries. And you got to know that when you do this. Plush, what's up? How are you doing, Plush? Um, you got to know that whenever you're doing this stuff. And um, until, you know, you can hear about it from a lot of people. You can hear about it over and over and over again. And people will tell you about it. But until you experience it, it's you can't really imagine the pressure. You can't imagine how much it, it hits you. And I don't really buckle under that pressure in terms of I, I get my stuff done. It's, it is what it is. But there are days when you got to take a knee. And sometimes I think that's what happens when you get sick. You kind of get like a forced introspection period. And it just hits you, man. Timmy Mello, a good magician never shows the secrets to his tricks. The shock and awe is reward enough. That final page is going to be so epic when we see it upon uh, uh, upon the time it's ready at release, not before. Yeah, it's um, the book has flow, and the book has um. There's this Lovecraftian spirit that just runs in my veins, 
that um, I've always wanted to to um, how do how do we put it? One of the th the approaches I had to this book, one of the things I was thinking the most, is when you talk about the idea of cosmic horror, right? And you talk about the idea of these things that just make humanity insignificant and small, which was Lovecraft's, you know, kettle of fish. The thing I always like to say is, is that I wanted to address um, the cosmic divinity, that power of good, that power of of righteousness and and spiritual life vivifying um, energy that also makes us humble, that also makes us feel insignificant, but draw unbelievable power from it. That's what Nosferu is about. And that's the thing I try to do as much as I can do to reflect in the things that I'm doing right now. And uh, and that's really what it comes down to. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, and I do love me a cuttlefish, but yes, I hear what you're saying. Um, but it's it's one of those things where you know, I wanted to make heroes that go into battle with these things, these these cosmic horrors, and they have on their side the cosmic divinity. That's like how they approach these things. Because I believe that that in, in terms of, of what I'm creating and in this world, I believe that the foundational power of this whole thing is good. That good is the foundational power. And that's the thing that is uh, very different but it does owe a lot to Lovecraft. You know, it's it's different than his approach. It's different than what he was trying to say. Um, and, and with all due respect to that, I mean, I freaking love, you know, what Lovecraft does. But I wanted to flesh that out because I just don't think it's been, um, it's been explored, you know. And, and I think it, it will be. I mean, I think somebody's going to be doing it. But I wanted to make sure that I did my bit, you know, because that is something that is... When you see incredible acts of kindness, when you see incredible acts of good, when you see incredible acts of heroism, you get the same sense as when you see acts of evil, that there is something that is bigger than the person doing it that is supporting them and holding them up. And uh, I know I've definitely felt that in terms of working on this project, because you go into this situation and you don't know if anybody's going to you know, respond to what you're doing outside of you know, the little evidence that you have in terms of, um, what is it Eric July always talks about? Um, you can't count on, uh, 100%, you know, transition from one, uh, platform or one particular area of success to another. So you've got your hopes and you've got your drive and then you've got to go and make it happen. Right. So, and you guys would be, you know, happy to know. And I think this is something that people need to understand is that the algorithms or the algorithms and the social media stuff is social media stuff. You can't really, you have no control over that. But the other day I posted, you know, one of the images from Nosferu on Instagram, a place where I got my sort of, I built my, my fan base initially. And that thing got like, you know, over a thousand, you know, likes on it. Now likes aren't sales, but it's great to see people connect with the artwork and resonate because I consider what we're doing to be something that's important and something that I'm representing what we do here in the Iron Age and, and in across this culture. And it's great to see that people, not knowing anything about what we're doing, see it cold and they react. And that's that's the big, yeah, <laughs> cosmic hours. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Gotta throw a couple W's in there for New England, man. That's what it's all about. But yeah, man, it's, um, it's, it's a big deal, man. It's a big deal what we're doing here. And people are reacting to it. You know, people are seeing it. And when I think about... Um, when I just think about how, you know, the things that we do that improve, you know, people's, you know, quality of life or improve people's, you know, experience throughout the day, just talking art, talking comics. And I don't mean Art T-Bear, but I could mean Art T-Bear. We love you, Art. But just talking about this stuff in terms of what we're passionate about, you know, heroism and, you know, whatever the, the, the thing is, whatever fickles your tansy, you know, whatever, whatever inspires you. That's the stuff that's where your gold is, you know, that's where your your treasure is. And for me, it was so many of the myths and legends and fairy tales and the stories of pop culture. That's why I'm here and that's what has inspired me so much. And so to be, you know, to be on these final pages and then to have gotten, you know, sick, which again, it's not the worst thing in the world that can happen to you, it just is what it is. But to have gotten sick was, it was kind of frustrating because I, I doubly missed you guys. Because um, whatever this thing is, man, um, and I know there's a lot of different things going around, but it 
it scrambled my brain a little bit and it's been hard to kind of get back on the horse. And the thing about it for me is, is that, um, so I had that, you know, that kind of, uh, I had to do that thought process of, okay, what am I going to work on on stream? Because, you know, if you've ever gotten into a groove and you guys have watched me now for, gosh, I don't know how long working on this thing and watch me, you know, when I'm in a groove or whatever, you don't want to stop working on the page you're working on. And if it's a page you're working on that you can't show, you got to figure out how to kind of force yourself into doing different things. And that's sort of what it is, you know. Um, hold on one quick second. Never awesome one. And great to see you awesome one, but I will never stop sniffing glue. That's just who I am. Uh, let's see here. Will Comicscape be uh, studied like the Renaissance in 600 years from now? I've got an answer for you on that one, too. Um, it will be studied not based on what we have done over the last couple of years, not based on what we do um, are doing even now, but what we do and how you know committed we are to growing this thing out over the next decade. And we got to think long term like that because all of these projects are a tremendous commitment on behalf of the creators and on behalf of our families and everybody who's doing this stuff. And the same thing goes with doing YouTube. The same thing goes with all of this stuff, right? And, you know, for me, um, I always try to think about it in terms of playing the long game because when you're, um, when you're working on something like this, it doesn't take a lot of pages and it doesn't take, you know, this massive amount of time to make something iconic, um, you know, in terms of or to have something become iconic, let's say. And yet there's this element of it, which is you've got to be very mindful in your creativity and you've got to make sure that you get something out there to people that is of the highest quality. It's not enough to be an alternative. You've got to be able to compete. And I'm very happy with um, this book in that sense that this is something that I think 100% competes with what's going on out there. I think this buries so much of this stuff in the mainstream. In terms of its beauty, in terms of its depth of, of um, you know, visual richness, it is something that when you guys see it, you're going to feel like it always existed. You're going to think, man, you know, like, I feel like this story is something that, you know, I've never heard before, but feels like something that, you know, is, uh, um, that I've always kind of known in terms of wh how it pays respect to the history of the comic book hero, how it pays respect to um, pop culture and, you know, the the mythos of people like Lovecraft and also, you know, our collective kind of mythos of, you know, the vampires and the werewolf and all of those things that we love. It is um, a book that tries to do for this world or what it's focused on doing, what Halloween is for holidays in terms of, of the weird and the spooky that's what this comic book is attempting to do. That's what it's about. What's up, Kawabunga? Hello to you, too. It is great to see you, my friend. Um, any visions during sickness like giants, cloud cities, and space menace? What is that? Space? Is it ants? Or let me just see what letter is near there. Is that it? Space something. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I'm with you. What's up, Mortal V? How are you doing, Mortal V? Um, yes, Nosfera the Cryptwalker. There is the link, guys. So, yeah. Um, it's, uh, art speaks a language which, le um, is less likely to being blocked or distracted from. Yes. Yes. And I think that, um, you know, another aspect of it. Yeah, it is great to see you, man. It is great to see you. Yes, indeed. Yeah. New glasses are essential for all of us. I think, man, it's like, uh, I've, I've been, it's so funny because sometimes I get so focused as you guys know, to get something like this done and to be staring down, you know, the final pages um, you get so focused on it, you forget to do things like that are simple, like, oh man, I need to, you know, even it can be for me, clean my glasses for God's sake. Like sometimes I'm looking through just, you know, dirty glasses and getting a headache and I'm like, dude, just, you know, or have something to eat. I don't know if any of you guys are like that, where you get into a zone working and then you can't think straight and you're getting yourself frustrated. And then all of a sudden you go, when's the last time I had something to eat? You know, that happens to me all the time, man. Um, let's see here. I wonder if figurines or lithographs would be interesting. God, yeah, it would be. Space mutants. Oh, I got you. Nice, man. Well, that's what I loved. Honest to God. Um, oh, there we go. Um, that's what I loved about, um, oh my gosh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original run. I felt like that book could go anywhere. It could go into space. It could be, you know, again, the fugitive meets, um, you know, an android or a robot, I should say. 
Uh, it could go into a gladiatorial pit with a Triceratons. It could go... The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles could beat a comic book artist named uh, Kirby. I mean, they could do so much incredible stuff. Now, with this book, um, it's got a very clear... Um, it's got a very clear realm in which it has to exist. So, that is to say that um, it's, it's straight, you know, it's straight horror. It's not going to try to be... Um, silly or slapstick but that means it can bring in elements uh as we get into the second book um it can bring in elements of you know the swamp thing the headless horseman as you guys know um and that kind of supernatural thing all while being true to that that spirit of this world do you know what i mean absolutely that's right is that the uh is that like italian i'm not sure, I'm not sure what that is but uh respect man Yes, indeed. They're cre that's a great example. They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky, the Adams Family. Indeed, there's an illustrator who created something that is pop culture gold with the Adams Family, man. That guy was a genius. When Nosferu takes off um, takes off his mask, he has terrible acne under there. Dude, I have those days still, Stephen Rockwood. You ain't wrong. My brother Gabe, it's great to see you. Dude, you guys kill it. We <laughs> you were killing me with Hulk Hogan and the... <coughs> Dang it. Pizza Mania, that just killed me. I was, dude, I was up till four, man. That stream, that stream got me. Ah, Snaps Fingers. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm putting it together. Oh my gosh, General Piggy member for four months. It is great to see you. How are you doing? I love it. Hail my friends and Shanth enthusiasts. It's great to see you and it is wonderful to have you as a member. Oh, just, just so you guys know, I went and uh, back in and I updated the credits for channel members at the end of the show and I made it longer. Because when I put the new song on, it was a little too fast for me. And I wanted channel member names to show up on screen a little bit longer. Because, you know, we've got quite a few channel members now. And it's really... Uh, it was too quick for me, man. Oh, thanks, Gabe. I appreciate it, brother. It is great to see you. So Gabe sends me some really cool news in the middle of the day that I can't talk about all the time. Which is kind of his thing. Uh, but God bless him. And um, and God bless that granddaughter, by the way. And, uh, and her mother, Minnie, and uh, your wife, by the way, too, as well. The whole family, the whole, the whole crew, your son, all everybody. But this is the thing, right? It's like, um, uh, the song is, oh, that's right, the song is Andrew Gold. I got you, I got you, absolutely. Everybody's saying hello, hello. Um, make, it, <laughs> make it an EBS long three-hour intro and exit. No, EBS still owns that, man. He still owns that three-hour intro, man. Respect to him. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting... Um, Getting my cyber frog stuff, man. I keep hearing about people getting it, so I know I'm going to have it soon. But man almighty, the more I hear about people getting their cyber frog... Has anybody in the chat gotten theirs yet? Because we ordered... Gosh, what, what, back when I ordered that, I think I ordered um, the PVC figure tier. Um, I think I ordered... I ordered it a few times, I think. I could be wrong, but it's, it's, you know, it's been a little while since um, I've ordered so many campaigns... That I actually can't remember all the time what I ordered. In fact, speaking of that, my brother Phil, man, when he did the supplemental for Malin's Graveyard Shift, I would have sworn I ordered that. And when it didn't come, I was like, what the heck, man? Uh, yeah, Cecil beat everyone with the intros. You're totally right. Oh, sweet, General Piggy. How were you excited, man? Uh, you got yours. Excellent, excellent. Using intro loosely here. You're right. Haven't ordered anything in a while. Gotcha, awesome one. All right. Kawabunga, speaking of uh, slapstick comedy, I really want to do uh, some in the vein of those 1930s slapstick comedies. I love those. The old screwball comedies, those are the best. Yeah, isn't it funny, right? It's can't wait to dive in. I know when it gets here, I'm going to have to like give myself a chance to sit down and delve into it. Because I know it's a pretty um, a pretty intense story in terms of, um, you know, from what I'm hearing from other people. It's very, very dramatic. The thing about Nosferu that I'm really excited about and um, that I'm, I'm like I said, I cannot wait for you guys to get this. And I can't wait to be done with it too because it is, um, when you're so close to the finish line, it's like when you're on a long drive and you're driving home long distance. The most dangerous part of that drive are the last couple of miles because you disengage a little bit. And that's the thing for me, man. When I'm working on this, it's not that I disengage, but I try not to get it, like, to let myself feel that sense of, it's done, until it's done. And so it's it's a constant sort of fighting of that. But the thing about this is, it's, uh, this book, is it's such a return and an homage 
to Hammer Horror that and and it's very um the story is very rich but it's like very lean it's very um mean <laughs> in the sense in the good sense and it's got just a ton of plot to it you're being introduced to a um to a massive I mean as you can tell from this double page spread to a massive massive uh world and it's one in which um all the things I love about pulp all of the things that I love about um about Frank Frazetta's stuff. I know I talk about him a lot. And the things I love about Halloween and comics, it all is coming together in this stuff. Now, I read at the speed of stop. I know I've talked to you guys about this before. So audiobooks have been life-changing. So when I say that um, I'm a big Lovecraft fan, I mean, I go through periods where I listen to certain Lovecraft stories over and over again uh, every single night just kind of drinking in that mythos and how that world works. And Call of Thulu is a really good example of that, man. Oh my god, yeah. Major Pain is not the movie we deserve. It's the movie that uh, that we need right now. Uh, <laughs> it's too good, man. It's too good. You know, and it's it's just... Um, I'm going to be watching that with Mrs. and Jetty for the first time because she's never seen it. So that is going to be a blast. And we're going to be streaming uh, tomorrow again. We're going to try to get back into the groove Unless something comes up and she can't, um, she can't do it. I don't know what her, um, what her schedule is. Oh, she can do it. She just shouted from the other room. Excellent. So we'll be doing it tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. And, um, and yeah, man, it's like, uh, but I've been listening to Lovecraft stuff. And obviously I know I've told you this, but I go to this, I went to the same college as the sculptor who, uh, sculpted the, the, the Thulu statue that is the jumping off point for that story. And so it's weird how I would have never thought about this stuff when I was growing up in Chattanooga, Tennessee with Stephen Rockwood, as many of you guys know. Um, and, uh, but it is mind-bending. It is mind-bending. Yes, I yes, I love the craft of Lovecraft. Yeah, I love his unabashed um, linguistic stuff that he does. You know, he's not embarrassed. You can absolutely get lost in listening to deep audiobooks. You're absolutely right, Timmy Mello, channel member and all-around rock star. Yes, indeed. Yeah, man. It's, it's great. Yeah, Telltale Heart is... A, oh, man, that's a brutal story, man. Love it, too. Love it. Yeah, Telltale Heart... It's funny how... um, It's funny how... Uh, oh, my gosh. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name right now. I must be... Edgar Allan Poe was such... He wasn't even a, a small influence on Lovecraft. I mean, he was a massive influence. Like, H.P. Lovecraft saw Edgar Allan Poe and was like, that's what I want to be. John says, bow to Mrs. and Jetty. Indeed. Uh, let's see here. I've just started reading a 606-page book. My God, man, you've got more skills than I've got in that way. That's awesome. Congratulations, awesome one. Yeah, that's always going to be a great use of your time. Four, 547 backers. God, I need to learn how to read better. So close. I know. We're getting close to 550, man. We're getting close. And you know what's funny, too, is that um, I, was, uh, I, was reading a, um, I was reading a novel that, I've been, uh, that I work on off and on to a friend of mine the other day. And uh, it's one of those things to where I, one of the reasons why I started doing that kind of thing was not just for, you know, practice with the skill of, uh, you know, the skill of writing, um, but I wanted to um, see if I told stories any differently when I didn't use pictures. And one of the things I want to say, and this is a shout out to my, my brother Razorfist out there, um, I just messaged him. Gosh, I think it was the day before yesterday, but again, ever since I've had this silly thing, my sense of time has been a little bit screwy. Um, but uh, I messaged him because I was listening to his audiobook, which the link uh, for that is in the uh, in the description, and I play the trailer for it. And I told him, man, I really enjoy this. And I just want to say something that I can't overstate. I know there's a lot of you guys out there who talk about drawing and to, or talk about trying to find artists for your stories if you have an idea for a comic book. As somebody who has actually um, spent some time doing it, you know, I'm I'm my goal is about forty two thousand words on uh, my novel, and I'm only at six thousand, almost seven thousand uh, words right now. Guys, it is absolutely worth, absolutely worth. If you've got a story to tell, don't wait around for an artist. Don't force it into being something. Tell it with whatever skills you have in front of you and let the rest come on its own. Because um, I think more people in this space should be thinking about writing. I mean, I know, shoot, we've got uh, we've got Jay, for God's sakes, Jay Lee, James Lee, uh, with the Steins. But more folks should be writing fiction like what Razor Fist is doing, man. Give it a shot. What's it hurt? 
it's weird how how much we change when people are uh, when we're writing for school versus or whatever which I never really did that because I wasn't any good at it but it's um, it's amazing when you're free to just write and not think about you know oh it's for this or it's for that but just getting your story down because I can assure you if you put that kind of time into something you're gonna have a much better understanding of what it is and and what it can be and so I really admire and I've really been enjoying um, writing without pictures and also um, reading people's work who think in those terms so so there's a um, if you think about comics for a sec right let's let's think about this for a second if you think about comics the foundation of comics was not laid by comic books the foundation of what we think of as the modern comics was laid by the pulp short stories and I really think that if we're going to make things what they can be here we should be leaning into that because you can write a short story a short pulp story where you try to grab your audience by the throat pull them into this world have it be sexy and mysterious and dangerous and have all of that great quality to it you can do that on your own and run it by people and say what do you guys think I mean manga does the short chapter you know here's a bit of this comic do you want to see more um, the pulps did that here's a little glimpse of this character what do you want what do you want to see that's the stuff I love man and that's what I really want us to start thinking about broaden what we're doing I was doing a dream journal every day um, I do a simple drawing then write down the dream oh my god that's excellent man that's absolutely excellent yeah I mean and razor fist like again why I talk about there's comics gate right and then there's the bigger bigger sort of um, thing that's going on the umbrella thing which is Iron Age media and that may get to you know obviously animation and movies and all of those kinds of things but let's be real um, its ground is going to be with books I mean is there a bigger pop culture phenomenon than say Harry Potter Lord of the Rings and all of these things just started with the words the language and somebody's you know view on things somebody's somebody's ideas and putting those down write those things down practice hone your craft you will feel so much more satisfied don't let um, an area where don't let anything you can't do get in the way of telling stories if you want to try telling stories there's just this one life man make it happen you know make it happen it's not worth um, it's not worth missing out on it because I don't need to um, what's the word I'm looking for when, when for me when it's about the story it's um, it's however I, I'm working this way because this is what I can do if that makes sense and I think that that um, this is this is where my limitations are in the in the best sense of the word but you got to work within those limits man don't regret putting that stuff out there don't regret making your work and making your art because you needed other people to help you with it start immediately start immediately because you will hone your craft and you can show it to people and you can get feedback from the audience and it's strange because I don't know if um, I don't know if people have truly learned the lesson that the biggest pop culture events of the last couple of decades have come out of the literary space right so you've got Twilight you've got uh, Harry Potter you've got the Hunger Games you've got all of these books that became those iconic movies those iconic stories that people were into for an entire generation and so my question is always um, what could what can you write that um, you know that which is one of why I you know do the writing I do what can you write if you don't have to worry about if a publisher is trying to figure out um, how to market it to the pre-existing audience they have what can you write when you're writing something to entertain the audience that you know or the audience that you want to have read it and um, that's what people like Lovecraft that's what people like um, uh, Ari Howard that's what all of those guys were doing they were trying to make this stuff happen do you know what I'm saying they were trying to make it happen by the way loving the fist of the North Star right there um, plush uh, says I'm going to write and draw my butt off amen that's what it is time you had in life indeed don't misread uh, don't misread figuring Sean are you and Mrs. and Jenny going to be doing some figuring <laughs> tomorrow night <laughs> yes we absolutely are we absolutely are yeah that's right uh, last night I dreamed of a uh, white plague that turns everything and people uh, sandstone and only monsters were immune to it holy cow that's cool man yeah gotta keep pushing work hard and refine that craft indeed man indeed yeah I mean 
I think that's one of the things that uh, Eric July, you know, was talked about the other day that I really loved, which he was like saying, you know, just get on that craft, like start beating that craft, as he says, like make that stuff happen. Do not, uh, do not think of of skill as being something that is, you know, something that's just going to mystically come to you. It's going to be something that comes out of uh, your discipline and your application of of work to it. And I know the more I write and the more I paint and the more I make comics, the better I get at the craft. There were a lot of comic pages before these. And these just happen to be the the miraculous total of work that I've been doing since I was like nine. You know, and it's stuff I could have never imagined ever at that age. I mean, I am, I tell you what, I've been very humbled by this process, man very humbled by this process and the amazing people I've met and the amazing backers I've met and amazing, you know, folks that aren't even in our space, right? They're just, they're, they're adjacent to it, dare I say, you know, people like uh, Grim Life Collective or uh, who introduced me to uh, all this cool horror stuff, horror monster collectibles. Uh, I just, um, I just mailed a package to um, one of my brothers, the choice voice, Michael in Oklahoma, uh, the man behind Starship Valiant. And uh, who introduced me to Hammer Horror. I sent him a uh, Mego uh, Peter Cushing um, Van Helsing figure to say, Hey man, thank you for introducing me to, to Hammer Horror. The artwork I do now would not be the same without it. You gotta make time to do stuff with that, man. Absolutely. Uh, Bancroft's... Oh shoot, let me click on that. Bancroft said... Man, my arthritis is bad today. Uh, Michael Bancroft said earlier that he learned to draw in color from YouTube channels. Absolutely awesome one. Absolutely. There's a wealth of knowledge out there. Time and effort, craft requires it. No one is blessed without sacrifice. Amen. Yeah, it's all, that's what it all is, man. That's what it all is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yes. One uh, awesome one. Mel B has been teaching the forehead too. Yes, absolutely, man. Yeah, we, nobody does anything. Um, nobody does anything that with skill that hasn't, you know, res, you know resulted from uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. Right, which is one of the things we say on this channel. Um, thank you, Floyd Mayweather, for the uh, <laughs> for the mantra. And you know, for me, um, I always think that it's. Uh, I heard Charlie Day from uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia fame gave a commencement address, and he says, he goes, I don't think you should do what makes you happy as a rule. He's like, because I work really hard and I'm not always happy. He goes, I think you should do what makes you great. And I love that quote, man. Do what makes you great. Like, do what is the thing. And sometimes it's not going to be the thing that, you know, it's, it's, that it's sometimes going to be the thing only you know, right? Only that's just for you. Like, when you have kids and you're raising kids and you're spending quality time with them, that's not something there's an audience for, right? That's not something there's a bunch of people around applauding you and throwing cash your way. But that is something that makes you great. If that's your goal, if that's something you want from your life, do it and don't miss it. Do you know what I mean? Make off to move on. There we go. Let's see here. Yeah, exactly, man. And so, yeah, make sure that's what you're doing. Whatever time you have, do what makes you great. And sometimes it can just be, it's the simplest stuff, man. It's its the stuff like, you know, having a laugh with people you care about. You know, I know that um, while I've done a lot of stuff, that, you know, like, whether it's, like, those Harry Potter trading cards I did when I first got out of school, or concept designs, or lectures, you know, at video game studios and colleges and things like that, that stuff is great, you know, and, and sometimes it's kind of cool to have an audience, I mean, depending on how introverted you are, but I will tell you, bottle feeding uh, my kids at four in the morning, um, when no one was there watching me, I knew how important that was, that's more important than anything else um, that falls into those other categories. And for me, working on this book, this book, the responsibility I have with it is, you know, to get it done, to make it great, but to make it something that maybe could have happened in the mainstream at one point, but isn't something we're guaranteed right now. Holy cow, we have got plush with a $2 super chat. My gosh. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, gosh. Right now I have to just be able to read, right? Uh, Super Chat, $2 from Plush. Never got Cushing as the Shadow. Iconic noses. I know. I wish we had gotten him as the Shadow, man. Absolutely. So let me send uh, some cheer your way. Some cheer. Here you go, my friend. This is for you, Plush. Charge! 
Where would we be without our cheerleaders? Where would we be? They make the world a better place. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, how are you going to advertise the book once it's out, Sean? Any channels you're thinking of being on? Yeah, um, I'm going to um, I'm going to see where uh, that goes once I get the thing done. It's going to start freeing me up once you know the printers are doing their things and obviously with Eric Weathers doing the lettering and things like that. Um, but my goal is to like the easiest thing for me, or I should say, the part I am so looking forward to is when I have this book done. Because, the, and, and I, I've got it to kind of just print and put out there and exploit, to use the, the proper capitalist term there, in any way that I can to be bringing in money so that we can do the next thing, right? This part you guys are joining me for is the most difficult part. It is the part that is overwhelming, man. And, um, and you just got to be so resolute and you've got like, you've got to know what your commitment level is. But you've also got to know how great the people are around you, man. And I mean, again, forgive me for being a little bit uh, sentimental, but that's where I'm at at this stage of the process. Um, I could have, I could have prepared for all these different scenarios. The one thing it would have never dawned on me was how amazing the people I was going to meet are, and how supportive they are of this work, man. I mean, you can't. Um, I always say this: if you come up. And you develop a certain amount of hypervigilance, right? Hypervigilance is that thing that it's like, uh, you know, you're always ready for a, what I'd like to call a uh, terrifying surprise, for lack of a better way of putting it, man. Um, and one of the things that does your head in and that, that really kind of blows your mind is when you start realizing that there are all these amazing surprises out there. There are people who are going to come along and send something positive your way when you, like, when you need it, man when you need it. And and you guys can do that for anybody, but you certainly do it for me, man. There are people, we were, uh, John was talking about this before. There's a gentleman in our chat um, on uh, Double Impact with uh, Gabe and Jericho on Gabe's channel uh, who's talking about losing um, a nephew to um, to uh, fentanyl and said, I just wanted to uh, say thanks for, for making me laugh. I'm having a tough time, man. And that just gets you, man. Like, I don't just walk away from that stuff. That stuff, you know, man, it gets you, man. And, and you want to you want to put good stuff out there into the world and and you guys have really you guys have really had a huge impact on me with your positivity and your enthusiasm i i don't think i can overstate it i'm going to see if i can put that in the intro to the book without it being completely hokey or ridiculous but if you've been a, a member of the channel or even just a subscriber to this channel what am i saying you know all of it's great um you know how hokey and ridiculous i am anyway oh my gosh we've got another super chat from plush holy cow um, let's see here. Where is that? Is that another one? Is it really? No. Hold on a second. Amen to the cheerleaders. There we go. I'm just making sure I've got, I've got all the super chats. There, there is another super chat. Holy cow. Yes, that's right. Anarcho-capitalism. Boy, you're testing my reading comp right there, man. Um, here, here, indeed. That is what we've got to do. Plush, uh, this one's for you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, guys, there are there are good people out there, and there are great, you know, great people who just you could be positive. Uh, yeah, you should subscribe, man. We grew up together. I don't understand what that's about, Stephen Rockwood. But there there are folks out there, and I think that's why I think that's why Ethan's connection to what you know, Comicsgate, you know, is in terms of um, as a brand and and everything else is that. Um, for him, it was this lifeline. Him and Andrea were thrown when their daughter, they have a new baby. She's diagnosed with autism and they try to d destroy his career. For me, it was like a similar, there's this Native American expression or Lakota expression, I think, but people know the history better that I've always loved because it really speaks to what it is. Um, the idea of um, having your heart on the ground. You know, my heart was on the ground. And I think a lot of us, you know, coming into this space who've been trying to inspire people and trying to bring that enthusiasm and that passion to this stuff. Um, we need sometimes, you know, we're bringing this because we're trying to tell people what, the things that we think are important to hear and that we'd like to hear. And having you guys reflect that back to us and have that kind of reciprocity of it is huge, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. I never subbed last channel ongoing sex joke. I got you. 
<laughs> I got you awesome one. Yes, bow to the Van Skyvers. Yeah. Ethan's always done um Ethan's always been cool to me. He's always done done, you know, right by me in that sense. Um and uh and I'm grateful to him. I'm grateful to uh to Jack Malin, of course. Um and all those cats because um they were really uh they were really important in terms of me feeling like I wasn't losing my mind um with the direction that pop culture was going in. And I think Razor Fist falls into that category too, Jericho Green, all of those cats. You know, they've got that that um they've got that sort of passion for this stuff. And I tell all those guys all the time, man. It's like you know, and it's like and of course my, my brothers in comics, man, it's like you know, you've got freaking, you know, the guys who, who came out with like, you know, John and Ethan and those guys. And then you've got sort of like Gabe, Michael Bancroft, Eric Weathers, Clint Stoker, you've got um freaking um my god, my brother Vaughn Klaus. You've got, uh, gosh, who are all of the folks? I'm, I'm trying to think. Rob Arnold, for God's sake. It's great to see Rob streaming again. Hail Rob Arnold. But this is the stuff, right, that really, it, it just affects you, man. Yes, that's right. Founding Comics Gate Father, John Jack Malin. That's exactly right, man. But these are the things, right? And and then, you know, people like, you know, Jeremy uh, Jeremy Fire, and or Ice and Fire. Uh, you've got... Um, You've got uh, Aldous, you've got, you know, Lord Ravener, you've got Snuggy Jr., you've got, like, all of these cats, right? All of you guys in the chat and all of you guys running shows who it's like, let's put this stuff out there. Cranberry Langers, indeed. Hail, glad you're here, man. So glad you're here, and thank you for being a channel member, man. It means a lot, guys. It absolutely is, you know, the thing. And and I will say for those of us, and I don't want to speak for everybody because it's not a power I, <laughs> I want to have, um, but for those of us... Like myself, when I was there at the very start, I knew it was something special. And regardless of what it is to people down the stretch, all of us who have been here during the start of this thing, we know what it means to us. Do you know what I mean? We know what it means to us. What's up, Jordan Horst? How are you doing, my friend? It's great to see you. I love that that profile pic, by the way. Uh, indeed. Uh, let's see here. Yes, indeed. Yeah, there you go, man. You guys are great, man. You guys are great. Michael Deach in the house. It's great to see you. Rob Arnold is the key to everything. He sure is, man. And guys, I don't know if any of you guys, um, I don't know, uh, I haven't talked to Snuggy about it, but um, the um, the bookmark campaign, man, um, the bookmark I did of Rob Arnold's characters, man, I freaking love that. That that bookmark that Phoenix uh, did, Phoenix Animation uh, Studio did of the um, the metal print of that, holy cow, is it beautiful, man. Oh my gosh, sure. Oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. God bless you. Um, let's see here. Um... When Sean's kids were uh, babies, they uh, loved it. Now, though, the 4 a.m. bottle feeding is really getting to them. Well, yeah, now now hopefully it's not a bottle of Jack, man. Um, did the birds get to Rob? I don't know, man. Yeah, I've got to send the birds uh, to Rob's direction, man. That's what Charlie Stevenson, hey, everybody, hey, it's you, Charlie Stevenson. It's great to see you speaking of positive freaking people in this world, positive forces for good. Yeah, man. And it's like um, I, was, I was looking at um, one thing that's really cool about uh about youtube for me and and i wouldn't know i wouldn't know banks and rob um and dean and all of those great guys you know from across the pond i wouldn't know all of those cats if it wasn't for youtube but it's the way that you meet people all over the world man all over the world people with who are kindred spirits with with similar hobbies people who are passionate about this stuff can you tell it's been a while since i streamed am i excited to be be here with you guys man and it's, um, I hate, I, I really do not like when I get, um, when I get, you know, come down with something. Now, I haven't been sick in ages, so I am not complaining. And I know we've got some great folks, um, in CG, uh, who, you know, go through various health things and, and, and who we are always thinking of and, and send our best out to. But I do, I miss you guys, man. I miss you guys when we're not doing this because this is where we share our artwork and our creativity. Do you know what I mean? Hail 40% Zed. It is great to see you, my friend. How are you doing? Um, and, and I will say this too, man. Um, uh, oh, let's see. Oh, the comments you pull up auto timeout. Shot. Yes, they do. Yeah, they seem to auto timeout in this. So if anybody, I mean, I think Ecamm, if, if you're doing art type stuff, might be worth a look. It's a really interesting, interesting way of looking at things in terms of uh, how it works. There's things I want to make sure uh, that I get sorted with it. But for resolution, I mean, there is just, I cannot get, let me see if I can adjust this a little bit here and focus. Yeah, I cannot get this level of resolution 
um, in anything else. I mean, it just has this this really great quality to it. And uh, in terms of uh, how it, it does everything on your desktop and then sends it to YouTube. So instead of you sending it to StreamYard and then StreamYard sending it over to YouTube, what Ecamm does is it builds your stream. You can have multiple cameras. It records it to your hard drive. So you get really nice high resolution video save that you can edit later if you wanted to. Um, and then it also just um, takes that 1080p broadcast, sends it to YouTube. And if there's a hiccup, it doesn't sort of hiccup and record a permanent problem with it. It hiccups, but then it sends it right back to 1080p because it's running the broadcast. It's all happening on my desktop. So that's one of the things that's really cool about it because I can bring you guys right up to the paper. Teflon Ron, how are you doing, man? My God, it's been a minute. It's great to see you. Uh, people all over the world, hail chat, hail Sean. Mwah! Much love, Teflon Ron. God bless you. And yes, indeed. Get your zinc, vi uh, vitamin C, and D. Yes, indeed. I absolutely have been. Um, can we get the auto timeout feature for, <laughs> for Cecil? <coughs> oh, my God. I love that, man. Cecil has brought me much joy and much laughter, as you guys know. Um, yeah, don't trust YouTube to take care of it all. Amen. Yeah, or even StreamYard, for that matter, because that's um, that's a concern uh, that, that I think about sometimes, which is, we start storing more and more of our stuff, you know, in the cloud and we store like whether it's movies or anything else. And I started buying hard copies of things because I just don't trust people to not fool with my art. And when you think about it, when you're looking at stuff like, I mean, shoot, even hearing about people taking JK Rowling's name off of her books or changing Roll Dahl's uh, work, for heaven's sake, what Orwellian hell are these people trying to make for us for God's sake? However, um, that's one of the things you get when you order your copy of Nosferu. That's why I think the physical media aspect of what we're doing here is so freaking important. It's because um, you it's your copy. When I buy a Blu-ray, I get the Blu-ray and it's mine. You know, it is mine. And people are not going to uh, people are not going to be fooling with my my Blu-rays and changing and editing them. All of that stuff. That is not what I want to have happen. That's not the world I want to live in. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's one of those things, right? It's one of those things. Make sure that, you know, you own the stuff you own. And that's why anytime... Um, I, don't, I don't know if any of you guys are big Lord of the Rings fans, but they just released a beautiful new... And, and I can't afford it, but um, they just released a beautiful new Lord of the Rings, like, hardcover that has all of the maps in it. And it's this really nice kind of... I think it might even be leather-bound edition of it. And I was just thinking, if you're a mega fan of those books... That must be such a great thing to be able to add to your collection. My dream book that my wife ordered for me for uh, Valentine's Day and I just cannot wait to get a hold of and has been a very long time in the making, uh, God bless you, Sarah Frazetta, is the Frank Frazetta uh, Toshin book. I cannot wait, wait to get that thing, man. It's going to inspire my artwork so much. I've been watching, this is how funny I am, when I can't afford to get something, I will watch videos of people who do unboxings of it and slow uh, flip-throughs. Just so I'm like, okay, if I curiously, until I can afford this thing, I can kind of live through you <laughs> and watch you open your copy, man. But that's how it is, you know. That's how it is. You got to you gotta put in the work and you got to, um, you know, you got to uh, make money before you can spend money, as they say. So it's like, that's what I'm always doing here is working on, on this stuff. And then, um, but it's, I'm really excited for that book, so... Thank you, Mrs. Injetti, for that and for all of your support of this crazy thing we do. This crazy art thing we do here. Let me see who's in the chat. I feel like I've like let the chat slip a little bit here. Um, will Aragon have a Paisley dress? Yes, he will. He absolutely will. Um, yeah, true. Do not be beholden to slumlords. Amen. Yeah, that's what the whole It's a Wonderful Life was about, right? Owning your house, owning your home, and not live, being forced to live in the slums. Uh, they're trying to hide their evil, their activities, through saying others are doing bad stuff. You're absolutely right. I mean, if you had told me, right, when I was coming up, um, that the people who were the most free speech, quote-unquote, were the most free speech, were going to be for editing books, I would have never believed you. Taking an author's name off a book, to me, is just horrendous. Um, what's up with you guys doing repeats of movies on Wednesday's show? Yeah. Um, reviewed uh, Demolition Man before. No love for Chuck Norris. No, we're going to get there. Um, we felt like it was a little bit germane and we just wanted to, to, um, close out, uh, our month of Stallone celebrations with it. Hey, Electric One, it's great to see you, my friend. I hope you're doing well. 
great to have you here in the chat, man. Speaking of, but yeah, man, we're trying to, um, we're like next week. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, we're doing major pain. And that is going to be, I want to promote the living hell out of that because that movie is a work of genius. It is such a great flick. Um, a true, a true comedy classic. And again, much like demolition, man, something that we could really use right now, a much needed, uh, kick in the pants. And like, you can be, you know, you can be, uh, so much more if you just get held to a higher standard by somebody who's really invested in you, by somebody who cares because anybody can critique and tell you, you could be doing a better job. But what Joseph Campbell always talked about and what I feel like Major Payne was talking about is that you can't ask greatness out of people with the same impact when you don't know them and you haven't put your time in with them. And Major Payne's thing is, is he's kicking their butts, but when you know some parent shows up on the scene who's uh, not treating his kid well, let's just put it that way, um, he's going to be there and he's going to be the protection that that kid needs, man. And that is... That's a beautiful thing, man. I love that flick so much. It's a great flick. Yeah, everybody's saying hello, hello to Leg Kick 1. I love seeing it, man. I love seeing it. Let's see here. Uh, they need. Uh, they were never for no censorship. They wanted censorship, uh, but didn't want to see the stuff they... Yes, see stuff they didn't like. You're right. And you know what's funny is... Yeah, yes, those who take uh, the black pill are abdicating... Um, yeah, abdicating doing good. You're absolutely right. Yeah? Bring in the pain, major pain, and never understood why we never they never made a sequel to Major Pain. I feel like they could make one today, for God's sake. Um, but this is this is the thing, right? Is that um, you? I remember the the biggest lesson you ever get taught about free speech back when we were teaching this kind of stuff more is you can disagree with what somebody says, but it has to be so important to you that you would be willing to lay your life down for them to be able to say it. And it can't be something that um, you're ever taught only goes in one direction, because that's what um, that's a it's a very childish uh, way to experience life. To think I only um, I only like the game when I win. I only like the the game when my team wins. That's a terror. Or I'm only a fan of my team when they win, or when everybody else is a fan. That's a terrible way to go about things. It doesn't mean you're blindly loyal to certain things. It doesn't mean that. But what it means is your principles need to be your principles. And they can't just shift or disappear when they apply to somebody you don't like. Presumption of innocence is one of the hardest things in the world to say when there is a, um, when there is a just a metric ton of evidence against somebody. But you have to be ride or die with presumption of innocence. And you have to be ride or die with merit-based support for things. And that's what we do here. Do you know what I mean? That's what it's about. I mean, listen, take some time. If there's a creator who is doing something you're inspired by and who who is into you know is doing something you're into, take the time to write him a note. It takes a couple seconds, man. You know, I wrote um, as I said, I wrote a note to um, to Razor Fist. I've written notes to people. And you know what's funny is you can never be, um, you can never control, and not that there's any reason to, but how people are going to receive things. All you can really do is is put that positivity out there. And what I found is most normal people, when confronted with something positive, are grateful for it. They're happy to hear it. I think it's you can never go wrong with it. What's up, Mighty Magic? It's great to see you. Hail to you, my friend, and I hope you're doing well. You know, um, let's see here. Uh, want me to show you a little trick to take your mind off that arm? Yes, exactly. That's totally right. Yeah, man, I love that. I love the line when he goes, You said you were going to kick me in the face. And he goes, You calling me a liar? I, lo I love that, man. He's the, he's the man in that movie. Yes, indeed. Hello, Mighty Magic. Look at all this stuff, man. Yeah, you got to, I mean, it's like, um, I've always, I've never needed perfection from people in order to to enjoy them. In fact, some of the silliest stuff that happens that really bonds you to people is in those those imperfect, you know, kind of moments, you know, when when people are just being silly. That to me, that's that's the gold, man. And that's the same thing with art. When people talk about um I love Frank Frazetta and I've had my fill and it's great of people talking about Frazetta since this book has been released, but one of the things I think that people kind of um miss when they think about Frazetta as an icon and not as a person is or just like you know a guy who's doing a job and trying to get things done 
is that it was precisely Frazetta's imperfections, his deadlines, you know, living, you know, like when people talk about, uh, Sarah said this, um, people always talk about how Frazetta did this, this famous painting on Masonite because he didn't have a canvas and he, um, uh, ripped up this piece of Masonite from the basement and then painted this masterpiece on it. And it's a great story. Everybody loves that story, you know, who's a Frazetta fan. Everybody knows that story. But it was Sarah Frazetta who gave a lot of context because she asked him, she goes, um, why did you paint this on Masonite? And it's not that he couldn't find a canvas. It's that he couldn't afford a canvas. And he said, we were choosing between, he goes, we couldn't afford food. We had a lot of kids. And so, of course, I couldn't afford a canvas, but I had a job that I needed to get money in so that we could get food. And so I grabbed something I already had to paint that. And you don't think about a masterpiece being done by somebody who is, like, living on the edge right there. Channel member Ellie Munoz, it is great to see you, my friend. I hope you are doing well. It's great to have you in the house. Hail Waffles, indeed. God bless you. Yeah, Razor Fist is great. Already done my daily watching of Do Not Forget, Do Not Forgive Today. Love that video. Yeah, I love that in all his Iron Age videos. Yeah, don't, um, I don't need perfection, but I do need confection. Oh, yeah, I do too. I love, I love me some confections. Um, well, I do want to win, but these days evidence equals lies. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let me see here. Ah, I remember when the ACLU protected the rights of uh, Nazis. Uh, yes, exactly. I know what you mean. Um, to march in Skokie, Illinois in the 80s. Yes, they also protected the right of um, a certain um, uh, group of people. You could even say they were a clan. Um, and that was the thing that was the lesson for all of us to learn. You can hate what somebody is about and what they're saying. It's not your cup of tea or it's downright unconscionable. But what they are doing is they're testing our resolve to our principles. And we, the worst thing we could do would be to hand them a victory over us and show them that we're hypocrites, that our principles are not so amazingly strong and powerful that they can't stand up to them. Our principles absolutely can stand up to them. And in fact, in point of fact in history, we proved our principles could overcome them and their evil way of viewing things. And that's what makes it beautiful, man. That's what makes it beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, they come in the clutch. Yeah, they do. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, a super chat from Teflon Ron. It is, thank you so much, man. Yes, indeed. For the good old days, indeed. Teflon Ron, thank you so much. Let me send a cheerleader your way. God bless you. Much appreciated. <laughs> absolutely right man uh, you guys are the best and indeed right limited uh market of speech is evil agreed absolutely agreed yes absolutely i um i was driving so i didn't answer gotcha gotcha yeah yeah i mean guys it is uh, we gotta start we gotta start realizing that it's like um when we're doing this work and we're thinking about what we're doing we gotta do our best we can't control what other people are gonna do you can never do that and you shouldn't want that kind of control anyway right but it's We've got to be able to at least exercise what we're about and do our best to live by it. Again, we're not going to be perfect, but if you want to bring positivity into this world, try to be that beacon, try to bring beauty into this world. Yes, it's there are real logistics involved in all of this stuff that are frustrating and limiting and annoy us. There's time, there's, you know, you can get sick, you can have any number of things happening. But what you always have to say to yourself is you got to know what that why is that gets you up in the morning. You got to know what that thing is that drives you as a person towards excellence. For me, it's my wife and kids. That's like the biggest thing that inspires me and drives me forward. Um, that's the reason for, for everything I pretty much do on this planet. Those are the people that um, I want to, to do right by. And it's for the people who love art and love these principles, love this country. That's important to me. And that's what I try to do, man. Yes, indeed. Yeah, leg kick one. No worries. Rather you drive uh, safely, says John. And agreed. Um, with time, I just keep seeing how evil their goals are. Very obvious now. Yes, it, it is very obvious. And this is the thing too, right? And hail Arthur, Aetherline. It's good to see you, my friend. Um, it's um, it's a, a big thing about it is, is trying to... And I, I don't have an answer for this. This is just me thinking out loud. Um, but it's trying to reflect those principles. Do you know what I mean? In in what we do and showing people, I think that our way of of living, and it's been proven by how many people have risked life and limb to try to get to these shores, and uh, and and why we've become this um, you know this 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 bulwark this wall in um, in you know defending freedom and defending liberty for people around the world, 
is that um, we our way I think works, and we've got to make sure that we're with what we're doing. We're showing them that. So we got to ask for people. You know, it's it's funny too. Like I've heard a lot of different schools of thought, and I'm not judging. Uh, these schools of thought, by the way. Some people say, you know, that's ah, kind of hokey. Don't say like and subscribe and don't ask people to become channel members and don't do all of that sort of stuff. And I, I want to be honest with you. I get that. I get why people think that. And I think it's totally justifiable. People should only do what they're comfortable doing and people should stick to their principles, right? But I was thinking about it and sometimes I think um, there's an element to me of it anyway of, you know, asking people for their vote, asking people for their support, so they know that even if they don't want to give it, even if they don't care, even if it's not their thing, that they know you asked and they know you appreciate it. And again, I don't have an answer on that, you know, of, of how people do things. And I don't, uh, if I was, you know, was as wildly successful as some of the people with that advice, um, I think I might have more to say about it, but I really don't, to be honest with you. What's up, Phil? It's great to see you. Glad you're back, man. Yeah, I'm redoubling my efforts to become... Oh, a, uh, a skilled artist. Hey, listen, they will repay you a hundredfold. There's my brother. Oh my God. Show me this, <laughs> this page. It's exquisite. Oh, Rob, I love you, brother. Thank you so much, man. It was great. Rob, let me just take a moment here, Rob. I did not realize how much I've missed you since you stopped streaming. And I'm really glad you took some time to take care of yourself and get better. I was just saying that to another uh, friend of ours in CG who's, um, you know, and, and who's got some health and she's issues. She's wonderful. Um, and, uh, I just think it's important. And thank you, Rob. It, it means a lot to me, man. I am so glad, um, that you gave me the opportunity to work on your replicator characters. I cannot wait for your next book, man. I can't wait, man. And Teflon Ron with another super chat. Holy cow. Um, for Rob's favorite cheerleaders. This is for Rob and this is from Teflon Ron. So here you go, my friend. <laughs> Ah, oh, what a great group of people here. What a great group of people. The Groomsman, my man. It is good to see you in the chat. Indeed, man. It's great to see you, brother. And uh, much love. I hope you and the family are doing well. Yeah, Rini is a good example. She said recently to um, Nerium, guys, my dyslexia with names, like some when people's vowels runneth over, my reading is bad. But I hope I pronounced that right. Um, Nerium, it is awkward at first, but promote yourself. You're absolutely right. It is awkward. And Michael can speak to this. I'm sure Rob can speak to this. Um, anybody in this space can speak to this. Um, there's, everybody feels awkward when they're doing it. The objective, and sometimes you're going to have periods where you just go, man, I can't think straight. I don't think I can stream right now. But if you just keep getting back on that horse, it's, that's the difference people appreciate because they know that it's, it's not that you don't get nervous. It's not that you don't think, oh God, what am I going to say today? Or, or what if I just go on there and I just can't think of anything to say? It's that you try it anyway. People really appreciate that. People appreciate when you show up for them. You know, it's funny. Um, when like it's it's. I was thinking about this the other day when people were talking about when you know people show up at um, at you know funerals when they lose a loved one and that kind of thing. That nobody ever really remembers what you say, but they do remember you were there. And I think that that's an important thing, right? In those moments where you're fighting, you remember the people who are by your side, you know. And I think that's why. You know, um, you know, Ethan has the connection he has with the guys who were there. People like Cecil, man. Yeah, life is funny, funner that way. You're right, man. Um, yeah, you just got to go for it, man. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. Much love all around. There he is, Jeremy Ice and Fire. There's my brother. I had so much fun making that Lycon for you, dude. It's that's what it is, man. You know, it's it's that's what we do. We have fun here. We have fun in this space. It's a great place to be. You know. Yay, more uh, two hours. That's right, exactly. You're so brutal, dude. You're so brutal, man. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. Hey, John, what is up? Crenshaw, how are you doing? It is great to see you. Crenshaw, FAO. Um, let's see here. I'm um, glad to be able to listen some of the live on my drive home. Well, my friend, you have a safe drive and a wonderful drive on your way home, and I'm glad you're here with us. Uh, let's see. Everybody's saying hello to Crenshaw. Uh, people are saying hello, hello, hello. Yes, indeed. Yeah, man. You got. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Jeremy. Seriously, man. Um, your uh, seeing your icon whenever you were streaming, and I'd be working and I wouldn't be streaming. Um, I'd go. Ah, oh, I I've got to watch. I've got to watch. And so to me, it's like as as what you're doing has grown and expanded on your channel. I both sort of was like thinking, man, maybe it'd be cool if he had an icon that sort of shows people like where things are going. His we know. Jeremy has an encyclopedic love 
of the world of, of you know, George R. R. Martin, but also fantasy art and paintings. He was one of the earliest adopters of Nosferu and a, the idea of a painted comic book. Um, and, and I so appreciate his support. And, um, and I think that that was kind of the fun challenge of doing that, which is showing that, that depth of, of passion and interest he has, man. And that's, that's really what it is with Jeremy, man. It's, it's really what it is. It's why people connect to you so much, man. Everybody's saying hello, hello and connecting life. You need to have friends in the fight. You absolutely do. Yeah. Nobody, nobody gets anywhere, um, in this world without friends, man, without people who've got your back, people who are ride or die, people who rock with you, as they say, as Eric July likes to say. Um, and, and that's really what it comes down to. And that's what we're trying to build here because, um, or that's what we've built here, I should say, and what we're trying to continue to do. And there's going to be people, you know, who want to, who want to be in this space who, um, and of course, right, the more successful you get, who don't, um, you know, who don't have that, that kind of, of attitude. And that's why I think it's always important for us, you know, just to, to exemplify it so that people coming in understand what we're about. Because, you know, every time anything gets to a certain scale, new people come in and they kind of got to get, I mean, it's the same thing with this country. You got to get acclimated for it. If you've ever had uh, anybody you know come in and take the citizenship test, and, and it's a really touching thing to see people study for that, understand the history of this country. It's a similar thing. Like, we are here and we support, um, you know, creators and we support people being able to make work. And we're not about, you know, that kind of backbiting status you know, garbage of people coming in and their whole thing is about, you know, it's like, um, what, what do I have to do, you know, to get the right people to give me my success? It's really about coming in here and making your own success and being free to have your own success. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's a big thing, man. Oh man, my back is killing me today, dude. Jeez, craziness. I know, right? The Greensman, let me catch up here. The Greensman, I love this pay. Oh, thank you, dude. You guys are killing me. Um, love your work, man. Glad to call you a friend. And you are, man. You know, you got my cell phone. Anytime you need me, brother, you just give me a call. It's, um, <laughs> you know, groomsmen, you guys are so funny, man. But it's, yeah, I mean, um, I try to pour my soul out in terms of, um, work. You know, I try to, uh, try to crack my back here. Oh, I just can't get it, man. Ah, there you go. You hear that? That was good. Um, but I try to, I try to approach the stuff that I'm doing with this this attitude that if people see one image from this book they're like what the heck is that where can i get it but that's really what it comes down to man that's really what it comes down to uh let's see here um yeah learning civics is important today's public education has abandoned civics you're absolutely right and we've got to make sure we're getting it out there you know we've got to that's why i always ask my college students um you know what article one of the constitution of the united states is it used to drive my wife crazy. It drove my students crazy. But the answer is it establishes the legislative branch of government. That's important. Article 2 is the executive. Article 3 is the judiciary. Article 4, I think, deals with states' rights. Like, you've got to understand, like, how the instruction manual of this... Yes, yeah, Snap, Crackle, Pop is right, man. you got to understand... Um, oh, your son cracks his knuckles. Seeing you try and crack your back is horrific. Yeah, I know. It is what it is. But you've known me since college, man. You know about... You know about... Oh, there we go. Oh, that put something in gear. But, um, but it's it's one of those things to where um, it's the same thing with when you tell people. When somebody comes at you and says, I just saw this interesting new work of art, and it's all about you know how things are hopeless. you got to be able to come back at them with some art. And you say, no, 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 it's, there's a counterpoint to that. There's a counterpoint to the nihilism. And that counterpoint is that everything is also kind of a miracle. It's kind of a miracle that we're here. I, I don't think that, um, how do I put it? Uh, I think that people should be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? In spite of how much opportunity there always is out there to do something negative and do something wrong, if people are going to think about things in those terms, then they must stand in awe and kind of marvel at the fact that people do things that are so good. Sometimes they just run into situations to where it's it's so dangerous for them to help another person. You know, again, I think about nurses all the time, emergency room folks. Um, we've got some great folks like that in our space. Uh, people who are serving in the armed forces. People who are just taking time to help kids and help young people to help the elderly out in their community. There are people out there, you know, who are just miraculous. I know we've got a lot of people in this space 
who do uh, special education. I know Ethan has talked about, you know, um, uh, his daughter and the wonderful people that she works with in special education. There are some, uh, there's some incredible human beings out there who get up every morning and do great stuff. And I think it's, it's a great thing to do is wake up in the morning and just be in awe of the people with, who, with their consistency, make this world a better place. Who take the opportunity with their art to inspire people and to bring something beautiful into this world. Because, yeah, I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you the negative if, if we can at least concede that the positive is a miracle. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's what it comes down to for me anyway. Um, let's see here. Oh, cool. Uh, hold on, my glasses just fell. Uh, I discovered a new uh, channel, Animal... Oh, Animal Cracker. Uh, uh, a churro that realigns... Oh, my gosh. A Cairo who... Um, who that <laughs> churro must be hungry. Um, a Cairo that realigns horses' spines. Very fun um, and good for the soul. Yes, people who work with animals, people who work with horses. Absolutely. Um, if people know the history of their country and how their um, country was founded, it's harder to control them. You're absolutely right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yo, yo, Phil. Brian Criscow in the house. It's good to see you, Brian. How are you doing, my friend? Six-gun gorilla in the house. It is great to see you, brother. Um, yeah, everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. Um, would the animal cracker be chicken soup for the soul? <laughs> yes, indeed, man. Well, because, like, um, I've seen people... When you see people who take care of horses or you see people who... Um, you know, who rescue animals and things like that. Like, I'm always amazed, man, because, like, one of the animals that kind of blows my mind is, well, Tammy A., it's great to see you, channel number. I just added you to the end credits of the show, by the way. Did that this morning, man. Um, let's see here. Oh, uh, Brian Criscow says, sorry, my glasses fell. I know it sounds sappy, but when I started with my local Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, DBSA chapter, I learned that if you want help yourself, you help others. It's very true, man. There's a reason why that wisdom is out there. Um, Rafael Eli, Eli Munoz, I've seen those videos before. Therapeutic. Amen, man. Amen. Yeah, black pilled people are easier to control. Yeah, because if you've got nothing, if you feel like everything is hopeless, they've won, man. The goal of propaganda is not to convert you, it's to demoralize you. So do not let it do it. Uh, show them your refusal. You know, put your refusal right in their face, man. Yes, indeed. Are we saying hello, Tammy A? Absolutely. Yes, it is great to see you here in the chat. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, I've always loved animals and um, thought about becoming a vet. Yeah, those people, man, when you see vets, right? When you see vets, for, for people out there who I know who are animal lovers, um, they're, you know, sometimes they're with you on, you know, to give you the best news in the world, and sometimes they have to give you the worst news. And they show up every single day, and they're there for people during very intense times. And you can talk to people who've got pet save love and loss, and they remember um, the the kind words or the kind support or even just the kind gesture and look of somebody who was there for them during that time and made it just a little bit easier. And, man, isn't that it, man? Isn't that what it's about? You know, it's, it's, about, it's about bringing that because, you know, it's like uh, – Without, without people out there to share this experience with and without people, you know, to kind of, of share the difficulties that we all go through, um, it would be so, it would be so lonely, man. And it's like, um, as I get, you know, as I get older, my, one of the things I always come back to is I try to appreciate what people are giving me and, and not get obsessed with, you know, um, so what I'm looking for, not get obsessed with, with, you know, you know, thinking about what's not, I'm not getting or what, it, you know, how things aren't going this way or that way, because I just think it sucks the energy out of you to do that. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, get just, it sucks the energy out of, oh, there's a link. Thank you so much, John, for that. There's a link to Animal Cracker, chiropractor who works with animals. Um, you know, it's, it's big stuff, man. Brian Criscow says, when people first come to our group, I always recommend they do some kind of volunteer work because it's good for the heart and self-esteem. You're absolutely right. Hmm, put your hope in power, which doesn't pass away with time. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Volunteering at animal shelters is also a great way to meet chicks. <laughs> says Brian Criscow. There you, go. there you go, man. You guys are trying to break me up today, man. You guys are breaking me up, man. That's what it is. Yep, but I'm dumb. <laughs> says Cranberry Langers. Yeah, and, and you know, um, it's a funny thing because I've been, uh, I've been painting or sketching at the airport, you know, when I've been going places, obviously. Uh, and, uh, and one of the things that's sort of funny is occasionally kids will come over and watch me draw and, uh, parents will come over and go, is it okay if my kid watches you draw? 
Now, you know, granted, I can imagine a situation where I would be like, I'm, I actually, yeah, please, I need a break or whatever. But all the time, I'm just like, no, it's fine. And I'll never probably see that person again, you know, but it was just something that who you never know. It, it's like if a kid comes over to watch you draw, it might be something that that's a passion they have. That's an interest and it might lead somewhere. You just have no way of knowing. So it's to me, I enjoy that. I enjoy um, making, you know, art something that is accessible for people. And, and maybe that's, you know, maybe that's why um, all of you guys who know me and who've supported the channel have pushed me uh, so hard in this this direction of just, you know, making the streams about, you know, chatting with you guys and, and making the artwork because I think it might, it maybe it just brings something to people that I wouldn't think about, you know, as being, um, as being so, so valuable, just creating kind of a, um, a quiet sort of inspiration preserve, as they say, with, uh, where I'm speaking easy and, um, and allowing, you know, people to kind of come in here and, and just kind of be in the space and chill and get a little bit of positivity, man, because I can't say it if I don't mean it, you know? And so whenever you guys see me and whenever I'm, I'm being positive, it's like, I got to feel it. Like, I just can't, uh, I can't come in here and be positive and, and, and have it be, you know, bullshit. It's just, it's not, it's not how I work. You know, it's, it's just not. And I think people would spot it anyway. And I don't even know what the upshot would be. I mean, if you're a miserable person and you try, try to sell people on positivity, you're going to be even more miserable. You know, you gotta, you gotta mean it, man. Right. You gotta mean it. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, Tammy A, Major Pain is going to be epic. It's going to be a great stream. I was laughing. I really was just dying the other night. It was so great, man. Um, John, do not neglect hospitality of strangers, for by this some have entertained angels without knowing it. Hebrews 13.2. You're absolutely right, man. Beautiful verse. Beautiful verse. Yeah, Major Pain is going to be epic. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Oh, my younger son um, is studying to be a vet. Oh, my God, Marcus, that's fantastic. Holy cow. Congratulations to him. Much love, man. Um, I do not think the Grim Grimson pushed you hard enough, Sean. I agree. I don't think he did either, man. I don't think he did either. Also, real quick, since I have a wrench, if you... Oh, sorry, I can't read. I still can't read. Um, if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, check out the um, DBSA homepage. There you go. Very cool. To find a group in your area. There it is. Absolutely right. Marcus Kellegrew, is he at State? There you go. Oh, cool. Is he at State College? Oh, I get what you're saying. Right on. Yeah, I mean, it's you meet such cool people man in this space and we're just what we're doing is we're just kind of being a force for positive and a force for good in this world we're going to put as much positivity out there as we possibly can and yeah you know some days we're going to get tired some days we're going to get sick you know we're just we're just people right but what's cool is whenever one of us is down there's always other people picking up the baton you know i like that the space is getting to the point to where um, you know, it's not just on one or two people's shoulders. And I also like the fact that, you know, it's, it's such a cool and, and supportive place for people to come in who are just needing something positive, man, needing something positive for their day. Because to me, that's the only thing that's, um, that's the only thing that's worth spending your time on. You know, it's like, again, if you've got, if you've just got this, this, you know, one experience depending on, um, you know, what your, what your belief system is, um, you know, what better way to spend it than with, with people being positive and people who actually, you know, I always say this, um, I said this to my students one time, is that when you get to a certain age, you have to face yourself, you know, you have to face yourself with this one question, which is life with all of its complexity, with all of its pain, with all of its imperfections, see if I can knock over those tubes of paint so I can balance it. There we go. Heard that little avalanche. Um, with all of those things, are you in or are you out? That's the only question that you've got to answer. And for me, I've taken a hard look at it and with all the positive things, with all of those crazy miraculous things, no matter how rough things get, I, I have to be all in. I have to be all in on people and I have to be all in on being positive, man. Because it's like, um, it's 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 just how I am. Like, I can't change it. I, I, I've tried, I mean, we all go through those periods, right, where you try to embrace cynicism if it's something that just is, is you know, you, maybe things aren't going so hot or you're down or whatever. And one of the things I've found is, is that my the hope in my spirit is too strong to allow me to do that and it's not because everything has been easy it's beyond that i don't know what that is about but i've had to realize that that is how i'm wired and i'm not going to be happy trying to be any other way and um and and look it does not mean that i don't you know deal with all the things that you deal with in life right we're all 
We're all human beings who have periods where we get depressed, where we get anxious, where we get concerned, where we have doubt, where we don't feel great about ourselves. But at the end of the day, um, when I feel that about myself, I try to never feel that about other people. I try to be that person who can maybe put some positivity out with one of these streams or with this book so that I can be at least positive for somebody else. If I can't be positive for myself some days, and maybe by being positive about somebody else, I'm going to hear the words I'm saying, and it's going to help me to get myself back on track. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you got to just, you got to bring the best you can bring to the game, because again, it's it's worth playing. The game is worth playing, you know? Uh, let me see here. Oh, I missed a bunch of chats. I'm so sorry here. Uh, let me see. Shoot, my glasses fell. Um, okay. Um, he's at UC Davis in California. Very cool. Uh, congratulations to him. Um, man, he missed it, John. Oh, what did I miss? Shoot. Uh, John, let me know. <laughs> let me know what I missed, man. Sorry about that. Um, Groomsman says, uh, Marcus Kelger, UC Davis. Woo, woo, West Coast. There you go. Lots of love for the West Coast. As Gabe says, the best coast. There you go. Uh, Tammy A. Pass, man. Um, um, uh, Tammy A. Pasta Mania never stops. Yes, it, it really does. It. Gabe was killing me with that the other night, man. Um, isn't that contradictory? Yes, indeed. Uh, yes. Hilarious. Uh, did you grow up on the West Coast, Groomsman? I know the answer to that. Oh, man. Jeremy, uh, Ice and Fire, 33. Bob Ross of CG is Sean. Ever positive, man. You know, I love it, man. I love this stuff we're doing, brother. And I'm so glad, you know, to be here with you and, and doing this stuff. Yeah. Need good words all the more in these dark days. Amen. Phil says, going to the gym, boys. Hold the chat down for me. Absolutely, we will. Phil, go to the gym for me too, brother, because I, I need to. Um, yeah, lift heavy Phil says Jeremy Ice and Fire right on. Autistic people are beautiful. They call you out on your inconsistencies. Yes, indeed. Absolutely true. The Groomsman, thanks. It's supposed to be the best vet school in the world. Yep, that's what I've heard. Enjoy your gym time, says Cranberry Langers. Uh, Zade Comics, lift heavy and safely. Indeed. Back to Lost Pages 3, guys, by Phil Zade Comics. Lost Pages is one of my, my favorite books that we've got, or favorite worlds, I should say, that we've got in, in CG. It's unbelievably creative. And it just all comes from the passion of people who want to explore not only just pulp, but imaginative fiction across a lot of different genres and find those that connective tissue that brings them together. And that's the thing I love about it, man. Uh, negative thinking um, is pernicious. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That was the hardest part of recovery for me was um, to wiring, rewiring my brain to escape that negative feedback loop. Life is worth living. It sure is, man. It sure is. Um, yeah, everyone I've talked to, Marcus, uh, the groomsman says, Marcus, everyone I've talked to about the school had good things to say. Um, I think, um, oh, he, I think he's at a great place. Your son. Yes, absolutely. Man, Tammy is saying, man, I'm getting hungry. Could go for some pasta. Me too. Man. I could absolutely go for some pasta, Tammy. Yeah. Cranberry Langer saying, yes, indeed. That's what it's about, guys. That's what we do here. Lifting. Um, yeah, that pasta mania rant had me in literal tears. Yeah, I was crying, man. Oh, of course, Marcus, anytime, my friend. Yeah, it had me in tears too. I almost killed over, man. I almost killed over. Um, Sean, uh, what you missed, Tammy A. New, oh, new, oh, wait, what? Yeah, new member, man. I'm getting hungry. I'm sure I could uh, go uh, for some pasta. Yes, indeed. What did I miss? Now I'm confused here. Oh, yes, yeah. Tammy A is a new member. And what else? Hold on. Um, a new um, a new member, man. I'm getting hungry. Could go for some pasta. Yes, indeed. I got you. I got you. Does, was that just now? Was that the membership just come through now? But yes, I've got Tammy in the uh, credits. Absolutely. And welcome, Tammy A. Um, thank you, groomsmen. Autistic people are a genius. It's a superpower. There you go. Ah, cool. Um, you got it, Sean. Oh, good. Just making sure. Just making sure. Yeah, um, because it is. I mean, it's crazy to see you guys being channel members, man. I, I appreciate it. It's um, That's why I, I enjoy going in and, and editing the Photoshop overlay I use uh, for the credits and then just re-editing the whole thing and then getting it ready to go before streams. Sometimes um, I won't let myself stream unless I make a mistake. Um, unless I check and update the channel member list and for the credits because I just got to get that done guys So much of what we do here, right is the thumbnails. It's all of the stuff, right? It's building the shows. That's why you see so many people, you know, and I get it why people are nervous But I about you know doing regular shows But I'll tell you this if you could just stream and you can't get the intros and the videos together give it time Oh, yes. Oh and go back six gun gorilla volume two trade paperback from Brian Chris Gal. There it is right there The link is on Indiegogo right now Absolutely, yeah. Don't talk about spaghetti with red sauce, ravioli, and cannoli, stuffed shells. You're killing me, Cranberry. You're killing me. Sorry, the new member part was part of the copy and paste. I got you. I got you, John. No worries, brother. No worries. Getting closer to that 10K stretch goal for 
um, for Doc Alpha, Doc Salem, and Six Gun Gorilla crossover Ashcan guys. So be there and back the book if you want to help them get to that 10K goal. You know, we can make it happen here, guys. We can make anything happen. That's really what it comes down to. It's where there's will, there's work ethic, and there's discipline. There is a way. There's always a way to get this stuff to happen. You know, I mean, like I said, it is almost impossible for me to imagine uh, what I would write in an intro that is not going to be incredibly sappy to Nosferu because it has been an unbelievably moving and sappy experience for me because uh, you guys have been incredible. Working on it has been so hard. You know, you, you go through periods where you're just you feel like the not just the pressure but you just feel overwhelmed by the amount of work and it's the people who show up and the people who are there and the people who know how much of a of a time commitment it is but also how much of a life commitment it is for your family and and that's the thing that that I, I don't know how I could ever put that into words so I just I do my best man which is to say thank you guys thank you for being here thank you for supporting this channel Thank you for supporting this book. Thank you for supporting my family and I. And thank you for making this kind of artwork, you know, this art form of traditional media and traditional painting. There's a reason you do not see a lot of hand-painted comics out in the world. They are incredibly difficult, and they would not be possible. This would not be possible without your support. It's um, it's like believing in a dream and helping to make it happen when you back Nosferu, man. And, uh, and God, I appreciate you guys so much. I can't overstate that, guys. I can't overstate what this whole thing has been, man. You know, we love you guys. My wife and I are going to obviously be streaming, you know, tomorrow. So you'll get to spend some time with us, you know, talking about all this crazy silliness that we do here together and, and what makes it so fun, you know. Oh, thank you, Cranberry Langers. We appreciate that. Hello, there's Eric Weathers. There's the man. There's the letterer in the chat. Hail, Eric Weathers. I bow to you. Another artist brother. An amazing, amazing dude. Um, and, uh, and just, uh, just an incredible talent, man. I am so glad that the Ripperverse has Eric July. I mean, has Eric Weathers there with Eric July, because, you know, it's, it's, I think I said this to you when you were talking to me about it, um, early on, but I, I had absolute faith in the whole thing because I know Eric July only wants to hire the best. And I know you, Eric Weathers are the best. So to me, it was just one of those natural combinations that I'm so glad, man. All right, take care, Ma um, Mighty Magic. You take care and have a good one, my friend. Yeah, thank you all. Um, all of you Comic Skate artists got your art. Yes, indeed, man. Absolutely. Yeah, figures. Uh, thank you, Sean. For thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. Much love. Yes, indeed. Who is this man? Yes, I know, Michael. I've been... Which one, Eric Weathers or me? I know I've been away for a bit, man. I enjoyed watching you guys' stream. I passed out like it was it was nuts, man. I was so tired the other night. Um, but, you know, it's like we're burning the candles at both ends, man. Absolutely, man. That's right. There's the forehead. Yep, he leads off my trailers for this show. Every single show. It's the way it's got to be, man. It's, um... Yeah, you gotta... You gotta it's how do I put this? You don't have to do a, you don't have to do anything. But for me, it is I will always remember the people who have been there for me from the start and who have have really supported me in, in doing all this stuff. And you know, my my meeting Michael was just me saying I mean, I don't know, maybe Michael remembers it better than I do, but it was me just saying, "Hey, man, cool. You're in Comic Skate. Right on. I just was I was going to follow him and I saw he was already following me, so I thought I would send him a message and he's like, "You want to come on the show?" And I was, I was just bowled over, man. I, I didn't even understand what launches were, you know, when he was like, do you want to launch your book on my channel? And I don't think, it's funny, now that I know what, what that is, it's even a bigger deal to me. It hasn't <laughs> become less of a deal. I'm just like, wow, what an incredible thing to do for somebody who um, you just meet, you know, and you're just kindred spirits with from the, from the rip, man. It's just, it's, it's freaking amazing, man. It's, it really amazes me. I could think about that shit all day, man. It's it's just, you just, you just don't know, man. It's like people, you meet people on the other side of the planet who become your friends, man. And it's, it's yeah, it's hard not to be grateful, man. It's hard not to be grateful. Um, you know, it's crazy, man. Yeah, a good stream again, Sean. I've been listening in the background. Oh, thank you to me. I appreciate that, man. Wow, that page, <laughs> dude, this page is freaking crazy. There's so many insane pages in this book, Michael. It is, it's just, it's nuts, man. Yeah. Um, Tammy A, I think Sean uh, said mid-year for this to come out. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, this is the deal. All right, so here's here's the thing I wanted to make sure I said about that. So um, my, my goal, my goal 
is that um, that every single well by this weekend every single page is going to be underway. Almost all of the pages are done, and then it's just going to be about tightening up the detail. And like, oh man, there's so many things I want to show you guys that I cannot show you right now. It's so annoying. Like ah, like the the well actually is this moved over? Okay, good. Just making sure <laughs> making sure you couldn't see that. Um. I actually have to organize the things I put behind me so that I'm covering up um, pages that you guys can't see, if that makes sense. And so it's like um, when I'm working on this this page right here, for example, this is the backstory. And there was a big change that went into this backstory that I don't mind sharing with you guys because I can only keep so many, so many, uh, you know, different things to myself. But um, it, it goes to the origin of the gear that... Um, that, that Nosferu uses, which is from the Order of Golgotha. And that is the name of the, the you know, order that um, this gear is found in the temple by um, Amun al-Hazared's second-in-command. So this is something, this is a good, this is an order that has existed for, you know, gosh, thousands of years. And by discovering this thing and thinking, ooh, I could use this, right? I could use this against my master he inadvertently starts a chain of events that leads this equipment being delivered to Nosfero the Cryptwalker. So this is some really serious lore. Yep, you got it, man. Uh, and it is, um, it is some crazy, crazy stuff, man. It is some crazy stuff. And uh, it's, it's some really... I, I don't know how to describe it, man. It's like... Um, let me see if I can find it. Make sure I'm using the right word there because I am tired. I have it written in my sketchbook. Um, yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the word. I'm making sure I have it right. Yes, that particular Aramaic word is essential to this story, man. Place of skulls. You got it, man. Place of skulls. That is what this is about. And and it is it's this sacred order. And that is where the ring he wears comes from. That is where... Um, if there is a force that has been fighting the forces of the eldritch gods and the um, cosmic horrors that um, that exist beyond you know our world, the thing that's been holding them at bay, the force of good that has been holding them at bay, that is what that order is. That is what it's meant to do, and that's what makes it so cool. Thank you, Julie Pascal. It is great to see you. I am so glad you're here. Yeah, <laughs> scary but really cool. Yeah. That is that is what it's about, man. That is that is what it's about. Yeah, sounds scary. I totally get what you meant. Yeah, and it's it's I this this world, this universe of how you get this this kid who through all of these random events becomes the sort of um, supernatural hero of this world. That is how it is, man. That's right. Not to be confused with the place of Tibius. That's right. Exactly. Amphibious. That's right. Brian Criscow. Uh, true, just as Secret Service does uh, not study counterfeit bills to find them, but instead study the true dollars, which makes the counterfeit available, um, able to be identified. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Chonk, you Philistine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a Philistine. Um, but it's, I love, by the way, one of my favorite comics that I read, uh, that I read in school, or maybe after school, and the Groomsman and I both had it, was um, King David by, um, by uh, Kyle Baker. And there's that beautiful um, beautiful, um, page where David is pointing at Goliath and he's Philistine and it's freaking beautiful, man. I've always loved that bit, man. Yeah. I'll throw you a bone at the groomsman. <laughs> oh my God. It's descending into madness, man. But that's what we love here, man. There it is, John. What's up, Clay Anna? How are you doing, my friend? It is great to see you. How are you doing? Um, but it's, you know, we're going to build this thing out and we're going to make it something that is great. <laughs> you Philistine, come on. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It's it's the best stuff, man. I love I love stories and I love the depths of the stuff that we're doing. You know, I love the um I love the richness that heroism brings. I love the richness that fantasy brings, that storytelling brings. And you can create something, you know, that is when you look at this stuff, you can create something that is so epic and is so beyond what other people have seen. Um, happen in, in work that it gets them inspired it gets them pumped up to go and do great stuff and and that's really what it's about for me you know it's about making something that's a little you know corner of beauty for people in their life so they can 
you know, feel that inspiration, you know, and, and, you know, these are the pages, you guys have been seeing this, but these are the pages, you know, I was showing if I can get a good angle on the lighting on there. Um, but this is the stuff that I've been showing people about like what we're doing here and like how we're putting this stuff together, you know, and how do you make something, you know, that, that just sort of transcends what it is that we think of as fantasy and storytelling. Got to be very careful with what I show, man. But, um, but that's, that's the joy of it. That's what we're doing, man. You know, okay, that's pretty good. You must be a dad who, but, um, I, I don't find you humorous. Oh my God. That's brilliant. Cranberry Langers. Yeah. I hope, um, I hope it made sense. My mind is struggling to construct right now. I know how you feel, man. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. I'm not a dad. I wish groomsman. That'd be a good excuse. There you go. Right. But we work on our skill set. So we're ready when the day comes, don't we? That's what it's all about. I went to SVA with Kyle Baker. No kidding. He was a bit snotty. I can imagine maybe he was a little bit. His stuff is um his stuff is beautiful. I love the way his his stuff comes together. My first exposure uh, to that guy was uh, Dick Tracy, Big City Blues, and I'm a big fan of um of Dick Tracy. I think that that world is is incredibly cool. Um, Chester Gould stuff is just I mean he had what an imagination he had, um, but it's just great stuff. Yeah, Shoff just said he's hiding stuff, and then he shows us everything. <laughs> you know? It's gonna happen, man. You know, one of the things that that made me, and I guess this is a this would be a good place to kind of wrap up. You know, one of the things that 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 made this book take extra time was I wanted to add this double page spread. And when people ask the question, you know, too, like what, you know, why does it need to be in there? It's because again, it's not about what makes you quote unquote just happy. It's about what makes you great, or in this case, what makes the book great. And I could allude to these things, or I could show all these things to you, or better yet, I could create a, a poetic vis visualization of these things, something that would just make them rich and allow you at the same time to pro project into the negative space where you don't have answers. And that's what I wanted to do with this double page spread. That's what I wanted to, to bring to this and bring to you guys because I think that's what you deserve. And that's what I want my audience to always know. Anybody who backs Shant and Jetty Art, anybody who supports this channel, I want you guys to know that I am trying to give you excellence. It's going to be excellence in the phantasmagorical, excellence in the weird and in the horror and in the adventure and in the pulp. That's what we're trying to deliver with for you guys here. And you guys are my ride or die early adopters. And speaking of ride or die early adopters, B Rose in the house, man, from the land of my birth. It is great to see you, B Rose. Respect to you, my brother and chicken. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. It's the first day of Arnold Classic here. Oh my gosh, excellent, Teflon Ron. That's outstanding. Yeah, Kyle Baker's best book, um, in my opinion, is You Are Here. I remember that book, indeed. Sean just said he was hiding stuff. Yes, yeah, says everything. You're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. That'd be cool to do um, uh, Phantom-esque modern pulp magazine. Uh, believe me, guys, there's so much that's going to happen here, guys. There's so much that's going to happen. If we can create short stories, if we can start really getting people to do, you know, writing in some ways is difficult because you've got to get people to want to to read this thing. But audiobooks, people are listening, looking for stuff to listen to. Write something, copyright it, record your best audiobook version, or hire somebody to record the audiobook of it put it out there. You never know what could happen. That might be the rebirth of pulps and then sell that hard copy of it too, because people want hard copies with illustrations. I've said this before, guys, Razor, the link to Razor Fist is in the description, but you know, I, I have the audiobook to Death Mask. I've got the story. That's not why I bought the hardcover of it. It's because I love pulp. I love the idea of owning that story. That's what makes it so cool. And I know that, that he's leading the way in that. So let's just keep going. Let's keep making stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? All right, guys, thank you so much indeed. God bless you. Thank you for being here and for watching this show. You guys are, are awesome. I've missed you. It is great to be back here with you. Um, please do hit the like. Please do make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Um, thank you, channel members, and anyone who wants to become a channel member, please do. I appreciate all of you guys for being here. Um, please have a wonderful Thursday and uh, enjoy yourselves out there. Um, yeah, I'm available for graphic novels. There you go, my friend. There you go. Um, let's see here. Bow says, John, um, just the, um, um, Asbury revival showed us people are realizing things are off. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, let's see here. Yes. Bow indeed. Hail B Rose comics, peace and love everybody. Indeed. I miss my CG motivational speaker. Thank you, Michael. You're too kind, man. See you. This is Marcus Killigrew. Um, Hey, Cranberry Langers. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm going to salute now my channel members with our credits guys. Thank you so much for being here. 
Thank you for backing No Spirit. Thank you for supporting Jonathan Jetty Art. Uh, thank you to my channel members who are going to be in the credits. And as always, guys, peace. Much love to you guys. And as always, as always, as I like to say, stay gold. You know, you guys are the light out there, so be the light out there for people. Um, and, and let what you do shine so everybody can experience it and see it. Take care, guys. Much love. Bye.